Hello everyone! In today's tutorial, we're going to learn about state machines in Godot 4. If you've ever wondered how to make your game character switch smoothly between different types of behaviors, like idle, uh, walking, attacking, or jumping, uh, the state machines are your answer. So let's build a simple character that can transition between different states, and this will show you how to yeah, smoothly transition between different states. So let's get right into it. What we will learn is what a state machine is and why it can be useful in your game, uh, how to implement a basic state machine, how to create different states, and how we can handle the transitions between the states. So first up, let's create our project, which I have already done. And let's go ahead and create a new scene here, uh, just to show you for this example. So if you want to go with me, uh, you can obviously do that. Um, we'll just create a character body 2D as a root, and then we want to add a sprite 2D. Now this will just be a simple uh, player icon, so I'll just use the default icon that is uh, supplemented when we make the project. And then we also want to make sure we have a collision shape 2D, and we want to set this to be a rectangle, and we'll just make this roughly the size of this uh, icon here and then we can save this as player.tscn so we have saved it as a player scene then we want to go ahead and come over to our root folder down here so we want to make a new script and call this state machine now this is where our main logic will go uh, for the state machine and this is also where we can select the different states which I'll show you a neat little trick uh, to use just child notes in your scene instead of defining them in code. So let's open up this file and we can get rid of this because we'll just rewrite it anyway. First off we want to go ahead and declare two types of variables here. So we want a current state, so just state. Then we want a uh, stata, uh, status, <laughs> then we want a variable called states uh, that is a dictionary which will hold all of our states that are available in the game. Now this uh, type is not declared yet, but we will make a state file in just a moment. So let's just do that right now actually. We'll just do the same as we did for the state machine. Create new script and we'll name it state. Then we want to make sure that we add a class name to this, which is going to be state. We want to make sure this has a signal that is called state finished, which we will be using later on, which will be of type string. And then for now, we'll just go ahead and uh, reference the player in here. I need to add ER there. And then four different functions which are going to be used later on, but we'll make them for now. Delta, which is not being used yet, so we add an underscore, and then the handle input. And we'll pass that. Then we just want to go back to our state machine and implement the functions here. So inside of our ready function, we want to go ahead and loop over every child that are uh, states. So how we're going to do this is we first want to loop over every single uh, node. Then we want to check if the child is of state. So if it is a state, we want to go ahead and add it over to our states dictionary. So then we do states child.name to lower, just in case we have any uppercase things going on. So this will add the uh, child, which is going to be a state because it goes inside of this if. And we just add it to the states dictionary where the key is the name of the child. We also want to make sure we add a finished state and we connect it over to our custom function here. Then outside of our for loop, we want to check if the state um, isn't empty. 
So if it is not empty, we just set the current state to be the uh, first in our array or dictionary, sorry. Make sure we call the enter because otherwise it won't work. Then we have our physics process function, which is going to handle our state and update it based on the delta. So how we do this is just simply update and pass the delta in there, which is going to be used later on. Then we also need to make two more functions. One is going to be the transition to function. Now this will be used to transition to a new state if we actually need it to. So let's do state name, I don't believe type string. I won't return anything, so just avoid. And then in here we want to check if there is a current state. And if there is, we want to exit that state. So we do dot exit. And then we can go ahead and replace the current state with the past state that we have. So we go inside of our dictionary and we make sure we get the key uh, that is passed along. So we can do this, which basically just looks in the dictionary and looks for the key that has state name. And then the current state will update to that. And then we want to make sure we enter that current state in there. Then for our last function is the uh, signal here. If signals is something that you're not that familiar with, I actually do have a tutorial about signals on my channel. Uh, you can just go over uh, to my channel or I will have a pinned card at the top right, if I remember. This will also not return anything, it'll just call the transition to function with the next state passed along. All right, so now let's go ahead and add three different states, which will be idle, walking, and jumping. All right, so first up, let's make the idle state. So we'll make a new file again, script. We'll name this idle state, .gd. And then in here, we want to go ahead and just do some actions, right? So let's go ahead and make sure this extends state. And then let's make an anchor function, which just sets the player velocity to be zero, amplitude at zero. And we have an update function, which will basically just handle our movement. Uh, to know when we are actually in idle. So if our input uh, is actually just pressed, do I write, which is not in there, so I'll just type it out, or we actually use the same, but just to the left. Then we basically reference our signal that we made in the state function. And we want to go ahead and emit a walking animation, or I mean uh, a walking state. And if not, we just check if the action was uh, upwards. So we do this again. But we use UI up. If that was pressed, we simply want to trigger the a jumping st uh, state. So that's pretty much already it for uh, the idle state. Uh, then we want to make our walk state. So inside of our walk state, we want to make sure we extend from state again. We'll just set a couple, or actually one const here, uh, which will be a float. And then in our update function, we simply handle a little bit of movement. So UI left or UI right. Then we want to set the velocity. There we go. Just 
some basic movement here. I'm not really going to explain it a whole bunch, but I'll roughly go over it in just a minute. So what this code does is it basically just gets the direction, so whether that's left or right. We base the velocity off of that, and we apply the speed, and then we just allow the player to move. Then if the direction is pretty much nowhere, we just emit the idle signal, and if it's up, we just emit the jump signal. So let's go ahead and implement our latest uh, state, which will be the jump state. extend state again and then we'll define two const variables one is going to be the jump velocity one is going to be the gravity which is also a float just reset this to something like that then we want to make sure we add a an enter function so func enter we set the y velocity to be equal to the jump velocity and then inside of our uh, update function we do our logic uh, just a little bit of a jumping animation uh, so that we actually know that the state is being called Basically, we do the same for the direction again, UI left and UI right. So what we do here is we set the y velocity to be equal to gravity times delta so that we actually have some gravity going on. Then we get the direction again and we just basically move him or uh, move the player in that direction uh, with just a, a set value. And then we move and slide so it actually does something. Then we want to check if the player is on the floor. And if it is, uh, and he's not moving, then we want to go ahead and emit the idle state. And if the player would be moving uh, and is still on the floor, then we just emit the walking state. So then let's put this all together. Uh, so inside our player scene, we want to add a new uh, node. We'll call this state machine. And we want to attach our state machine script to it. And then, uh, as three node children, we want to also add the scripts to the idle state. And let's duplicate this and rename this to walk state, and then our jump state. And then we make sure we actually add the script onto those as well. Then what we want to do is inside of our uh, player script, uh, we actually want to change one thing or actually we need to still make that so let's make our player script and we want to make sure that inside of our ready function um, we need to make sure that the uh, player is going to be able to get reference inside of the state functions because as we can see we use player here and in the other states uh, but now the uh, states don't know about that reference yet, so let's do that right now. We simply loop over every child in state machine, which is our which are our different states, and we want to make sure that state.player is self. 
So this way we have referenced that the uh, player variable kind of in the state uh, of our state machines is just self, which just means that it will be the player. Let's also just rename the character body 2D to player so that it looks better. So then we can test out our state machine by just hitting play. And then in here we can simply go ahead and run the scene. Uh, when we run this code, we actually get the error that player is not being initialized properly. So let's go ahead and go to our player script. Maybe we need to add an extra check in here uh, to make sure that it is a state. And we might also want to go ahead that in our state base class, we have that explicitly typed, which we do. Uh, yeah, let's just rerun this code. Okay, it still doesn't work. And we could just simply go ahead and check if there is a player. If we do that. And if there isn't a player, just return. Let's see. Ah, we're, we're getting closer. Invalid access to property or D1. I actually don't need to add the idle states behind this. That was my bad. Because in here we check or we actually go ahead and pass the uh, names over to our uh, state, right? So in here we emit with jump. So it was looking for a jump in here, but because we had state behind it, I think that's what messed it up. Yes, it did. So let's for simplicity actually move this icon over to the center a little bit, because now it's kind of hard to see. Anyway, as you can see, we are now moving left and right. We can also go up which sort of plays a bounce animation, and because we don't have a floor, uh, it actually uh, falls through the map. So that just shows that our states are actually working. So let's just run this again. Uh, we can see the states are working because we're able to be stuck in idle. Uh, we can move left and right, so we know the walk uh, animation or the walk state has been triggered because that's the only place we do the uh, handling of the movement, right? So then also for the jump, we saw it a second ago, we fall through the map, but I'll just do it again, because it's pretty much the end of the tutorial. So we can also see that the uh, jumping works. Uh, and, and if you actually had a floor, it would obviously not go through that. Um, but yeah, it just shows the, the basics of the state machine. Now, if you want something a little bit more advanced, please let me know in the comments. I can do that. Uh, but this was just a basic uh, but pretty powerful state machine that was implemented in Godot. And this pattern can help you create more organized and maintainable uh, game code. And in the next tutorial, uh, I could, if you wanted, uh, add animations and some more complex states to make our character even better. Uh, but that's something I'll leave up to you if that's something uh, you want to see in the future. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions uh, for future videos. And without further ado, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.